Hey everyone, Rob here. We have updates on what's going on here in Iceland regarding the earthquakes. A new earthquake that was over a magnitude of 3, closer to the capital area, and actually a little bit further away than Grindavik and Svartsengi that we've seen. Now, first things first, the Minister of Justice, Gudrun Hafstingsdottir, says that work on the defenses at Svartsengi and Grindavik is in full swing. Now, those of you that are sort of new to all this, Svartsengi is near the Blue Lagoon and Grindavik is just a little bit further from that. So the fortifications around Svartsengi are being completed. Still a few gaps to be filled in and uh, they're just about ready. There's been work around the you know Grindavik area as well to protect that. She has said that a discussion has yet to be made on whether to continue with all of these defenses just because of the discussion on moving Grindavik as a town. Now, there will be a request from National P Police Commissioner for the whole project on Grindavik, and then she's going to take a stand on it, but the National Pol Police Commissioner and the Civil Defense will take care of all of that project. Now, the housing issues that have been sort of in the news and sort of the issue that we're having with, with Grindavik is, of course, at the forefront. And when asked about the government's next steps regarding all of this, Gudrun says that measures and the measurements for Grindavik's people were presented this week, uh, as I had in a different video, and that the final implementation of it is still to come. The Minister of Finance announced that she would submit a bill to that effect at the beginning of February, which is next week, we're expecting. The Minister says that the plan was to give Grindavik people the possibility that this you know, country of Iceland, the government, would pay out the equity of their properties, which they could then use to buy housing somewhere else in Iceland. She said that this needs to be implemented and a decision made on how to value all of these different assets and houses in the area. They're looking to ensure that the people of Grindavik remain owners of their properties while this, at this time of great uncertainty, is going on. It's difficult to see into the future. You know, we still see land rise in the area, and it's not possible to tell about you know whether or not people can stay in Grindavik or not. And all the defenses is still happening. Uh, they don't know when all this is going to calm down. Some people are saying that this sort of uncertainty in the Reykjanes Peninsula could be for centuries, decades to centuries. Now, the civil defense have called for an information meeting at 1 o'clock today, it was January 28th, where the plan for the opening of Grindavik will be presented. However, the opening, they say, is going to be limited. We can see a picture here of how Grindavik was right after the eruption. We can see some destroyed houses because of the lava. Vidir Reynison, Director of Public Safety, he's going to lead the meeting, and there will also be Ulver Ludvigsson, who is the police chief in Sörnes, which is the area that Grindavik resides. The meeting is going to be streamed, there's going to be sign language interpreted, with Icelandic sign language, and it's also going to be in Polish, but not in English, unfortunately. As everyone knows, work's been going on some, for some time, trying to open Grindavik to the residents and businesses, and with some restrictions, of course. Living in the uncertainty that the residents of Grindavik have been doing so for the last few days, weeks, and months, I mean, with basically since November, is something that no one should have to experience. And this is all quotes from an announcement from the public defense yesterday. So stay tuned because there's going to be some news on what the outcome of all this is. Other news on earthquakes. Earthquakes continue to be felt southeast east of the capital area of Reykjavik and northwest of Blauafet, which is a ski resort just outside of Reykjavik towards, you know, Kvedegeli and Selfoss. So it's a, it's a mountain range just a little bit away. Now, the biggest earthquake that was felt was 3.1 magnitude in size, according to the meteorological office's measurements. And a second smaller earthquake occurred in the same place, but it was 2.4. And then there was 20 smaller earthquakes recorded in the area uh, over the past you know, couple days, two days, basically. At the same time, the seismic activity continues to sort of slow down a little bit over the megatunnel in Grindavik. But it is very clear to everyone looking that magma is still accumulating under the area in Svartsengi. There have also been some small earthquakes at Gietefet, north of Thorlok's hip. Uh, but MBF, which is the news agency here, has previ previously reported... Uh, on a series of earthquakes in the area after a new eruption erupted on the Reykjanes Peninsula. It's worth noting, though, that the so-called you know, volcanic activity, uh, all of this is not showing up. This is just earthquakes occurring 
in these areas. Now, the two largest earthquakes, uh, if we take a look uh, sort of in the area here, we have Hapnefeldert and we have Blauefeld is basically over in this in this sort of area, this Husfetsbrunni area. That's where this Blauefeld it is. And then, of course, we see Grindavik towards the bottom, the Keflavik airport here, and then Reykjavik is right above where it says Hapnefeldert. Uh, just over here. Now, so Blaufet and the earthquakes, they were in this Husfetsbrunni area, which is much closer to Reykjavik than, of course, uh, we see Grindavik and the Blue Lagoon and things like that. Now, this Husfetsbrunni is the area, and the name of the lava sort of area that covers a large area between Heidmörkur and Blaufjörta. And these are a lot of Icelandic names, I know, but uh, bear with me. Gets his name from you know the edge of this western end of the lava, and has also been called Kongsfjörnshraun. A lot of Icelandic names, but basically, when we're looking at how everything's been going on, you can see here dates, and I know this is all in Icelandic, but these are dates of when these eruptions and lava actually appeared. So we can see that around you know 800 and then we have 900 to 1000 1155 to 1180 you know and so forth and you can see the system or systems that have erupted in correspondence to those years so who's first Bruni, like other lava in the area is attributed to the brennis system one of several volcanic systems in the reykjanes peninsula and the Reykjanes Peninsula, again, is this region down here in the lower area. And is believed to have flowed after a settlement around the 10th or 11th century. So it's quite a while ago that this area had been active. Together with other lava sort of systems from the uh, Brennesfjall system, is believed to have flowed in the same sort of time, in the same sort of eruption, uh, which is now named the Christianifiers. And uh, it's, again, a lot sort of to, to remember, but it's basically saying that all of these systems are connected. And they're in the news saying that it's not necessarily impossible that the earthquakes going on in this area over here are connected or not connected to the land rise that's going on near Grindavik. So, vol the volcanic activity during each eruption is most often started in one system or another and then subsequently moved west and out along the peninsula into the other volcanic systems that lie there. So, they are all connected in one way or another. Now, taking a look at the activity that we're seeing, here's another map we see here, the 3.1, this green star. Is showcasing where that is and we can see that there's less activity over here now there's been a lot of snow and the weather in Iceland isn't the best so it does affect some of the systems but just to give you an idea of Reykjavik here we're getting magnitude a 3.1 earthquake here we still have land rise over in Svartsvingi in the Grindavik area and then at Keflavik airport so there's a lot of activity going on throughout Iceland and when we take a look at the whole country, we can see that most of the activity is happening right there. One last thing, Blaufet, where this earthquake occurred, is a ski resort uh, in, in Iceland. I've, I've gone there numerous times, and so it's just something uh, people going there should keep in mind that uh, you know we have landslides and we have avalanches and things like that. So just be mindful if you're in the area. So that's the news for today, I know there's a lot of uh, Icelandic words, especially going over the system here, but uh, hopefully we get information on what's going on with Grindavik in the time to come. So stay tuned because one o'clock they're going to have a meeting and we'll see if the people of Grindavik will be allowed back home. And if so, what does that look like for them in order to go back uh, in some sort of restrictive way or another? So until next time, thanks so much for watching.